everybody. My name is Jessie and I do perfume reviews in ASMR format. So if you like perfume and also if you enjoy ASMR, you are in a good place for our video today. All right. Um, oh, and also if you're interested, I can make you a creative custom ASMR video. Check the link in my description below. Okay, so today we are, I'm going to be showing you fragrances from my collection that are unisex. Uh, and this is just my um, interpretation of fragrances that I think of as more unisex. And what do I mean by unisex? Um, well, I guess in fragrance land, typically more masculine fragrances tend to have maybe more base notes, um, so maybe like more woody notes, be a little more bold, maybe more spicy, aromatic, things like that. Um, and f I think typically in fragrance land, feminine fragrances tend to have maybe more florals, um, more bright, light, soft. Sorry, I've got cat hair all over my face, as usual. Um, so anyway, I mean, fragrance is fragrance, and you just wear what you want to smell like, obviously. But anyway, today's collection is ones that I tend to see as kind of more so in the middle on that feminine masculine spectrum. So I've brought some of my bottles that I have, and then I also, as usual as well, I have some samples. So I'll touch on these. I've got quite a few overall, and for this video, I decided to not pull up Fragrantica and go over notes and things like that. I mean, I know some of the notes in these, but um, I'm just going to kind of tell you what I smell and what it smells like to me. Also, I recently did a feminine fragrances video, so those were fragrances from my collection that I perceived to be more feminine, so typically more like floral, sweet fragrances that to me read as like hyper femme. Um, so as you can see, I dressed on theme. I actually don't have any flannels right now. I feel like I usually do, but so this is my fiance's flannel. And then I just thought I'd go with some fun, uh, like wooden uh, earrings. So that's my look. It's kind of like a unisex look for today. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and start off with... This is a fragrance that's newer to my collection, although I have smelled it long ago, like two years ago. But this is called Lalique Living. I don't know if you can see, but it says it. Lalique Living around the cap, which is cool. This is what the cap looks like. I think it's supposed to, I don't know if it's supposed to look like birds. It looks like birds to me, but it's definitely a unique bottle. It has these like little white lines down the side. So I think it's, yeah, it's a fun bottle. Um, this fragrance is, I absolutely love it so much. It's not my typical scent profile. I often tend to go with like a lighter, um, maybe floral, airy, musky, soft type scents. This one's definitely more woody. I believe it has a prominent vetiver note in it. It's got some other kind of like woody aromatic notes. Um, and it has a lavender in it. It's just kind of like woody a little bit. Um, softly spicy to me. It's very unisex. Super pretty. I feel like this would be great for um, fall and winter, but you could also wear it. I feel like you could wear it year-round. Really pretty scent, um, but not like, yeah, pretty. I don't mean as in like super feminine. It's just like really, hmm. It's a very like earthy scent to me. Very like grounded earthy. And what was I going to say? Um, oh, this is discontinued, but you can still find it. Um, probably not as like cheap, but I think I found this bottle for like 60 
$70 on Mercari. Gosh, my nails are so short. They're like harder to make tapping sounds. I cut them really short because I'm not going to paint them for three weeks. And then when I paint them in three weeks, that's like right before I get married. So I just wanted to like not have to think about them for these next few weeks while we're doing a bunch of wedding prep. Okay, so that is La Leak Living. Next one, I don't know how well known this is, um, but I love this one. This is by Banana Republic and it's called 90 Pure White. So this is a very musky fragrance and it's got some citrus notes as well as, um, I think it has a tea note. So it's like a very light, musky, citrusy, slightly green tea. Um, yeah, it's just like really subtle. You need to spray quite a lot and it's still very much like a skin scent. Very subtle. But I really like it. I feel like this is a great office scent. Um, because it's really non-offensive. I feel like you could wear this if you're working in healthcare or other fields, um, where you need to, like, really tone down your scent. And again, I feel like this is very unisex. It's just mostly musky touch of, like, citrus and, um, I think green tea, like I said, or some sort of tea. This is hard going through these without, like, knowing all the- having all the notes in front of me. It really makes me want to pull up for a grand checkup, but I'm not going to. Okay, so next, this is Moss by Commodity, and this is the personal one, you can see, because it has a minus. So, with the Commodity fragrances, they have three, um, iterations for each one. So, there's the personal, then there's the expressive, and then there's the bold. The bold has a plus, whereas this one has a minus. And then the expressive, I, I don't know if it has either, but anyway, this is the, like, most kind of weak or, like, um, moderate of them. Um, that's why it has the minus, because it's more subtle. And so this one is so nice. This is just, like, a lightly green, kind of mossy, earthy musk. So it's, it's very musky. The musk in it reminds me of the musk in... what is that called? Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue, Oh Intense. Oh Intense. Um, that's just like what I associate the type of musk with, if you've smelled that one. But anyway, yeah, it's like a really nice, clean musk, but then it has like a mo- I think it has a moss note in it, or like earthy, mossy, green type notes. I think it might have pedigrain, so it's kind of like a green, slightly citrusy facet as well. But I like this, and I like pairing this with other green fragrances that are maybe stronger, because this gives like a nice, musky base. Okay, so that is Commodity Moss, the, um, oh my gosh, the, what is it called? The personal one, the personal iteration. Okay, next. This is Versace Versance. It comes in this green, I don't know if you can tell, but it's green liquid. You can probably see better against a white background. Green liquid, and I really like the bottle. It's got this um, little emblem here. Kind of like a regal Greek, Greek type theme. And this fragrance is super fresh citrusy, woody, a touch green, just very fresh, like zested lime or lemon. I forget what citruses are in here, but there might be like all three. There might be like lime, lemon, and orange. Um, and then yeah, I know this has some woody notes. I forget what specifically, but it's just very fresh. Great for summer. Yeah, very invigorating. Totally unisex in my opinion. This is, this was released for women specifically from the brand, but I just see it as very unisex. Um, yeah, because it's, it's not like sweet. It's just like kind of woody sprite 
zesty citrus. Okay, so that is Versace's Versance. Alright, so moving on, this is a newer fragrance to my collection. This was called Figi Eden by Armani Privé, which is the private line from Armani. I really, really like the bottle for this fragrance because I love the purple liquid, the purple color coming through, this gold plaque, and then I love these tops on the Armani ones. They have these um, kind of like stone, gemstone type look. So it just gives it a beautiful, kind of the bottle kind of looks masculine and feminine to me because it's got like these straight lines, looks very kind of masculine, but then this like natural, beautiful curved top. So anyway, um, this fragrance definitely leans more feminine in my opinion, but it's still like, I feel like it's still kind of in the middle. It's a touch um, powdery and a touch sweet, but not super sweet. As you can see by the name, it is a fig fragrance. And I bought this one because I've kind of been on the hunt for a fig fragrance that I actually enjoy. And I like this one a lot. It might not be in my collection forever, but I'm keeping it for now. It's a very, I would say like a powdery green fig. It's not like a fruity sweet um, syrupy fig at all. It's like a fresh, green, powdery, airy fig. It's also got a ton touch of pink pepper in the top notes, which gives it a spiciness that doesn't last very long. It's lighter, softer, so again, this could be one that you could wear in the office. I find it sophisticated, and like I said, fairly unisex, but maybe a little bit feminine-leaning, so... That is Figi Eden by Armani Privé. Okay, and then next, this is a big old, big old bottle of Calvin Klein Reveal. I used to have a mini bottle of this. The reason that I have this is because I bought it in a it was like a bundle on Mercari, and this came in it, so I'm reselling this. This is not actually... I think all the other bottles I'm showing you are in my collection, and I'm keeping this one. I am not, but I do really like it. I'll tell you why I'm not keeping it more in a second, but this is a... This has a salt note, and I think it might also have an amber green note. It smells like a touch marine because of that. Um, but it's very, like, kind of ambery, in a salty ambergris way. Um, oh, it's hard to explain. It's very sexy. It's very, like, skin-like. Like, it smells kind of like your skin. It feels like something that I would want to wear at night more. It also has a black pepper note in it, and I know... I don't know if it has a vanilla note, but it feels like it has something kind of vanilla-y, ambery, so it's very sexy. This is the, um, there's a masculine, there's like a for him of this Calvin Klein reveal. So this is the feminine version, however, I feel like this is pretty unisex, doesn't smell like uber femme to me, just very sexy. So the reason that I'm not keeping this one is because I have this fragrance called Bolu Turquoise by Armani Privé and um, it does, they smell similar because they both have salt notes, they both have, I know this has a vanilla, I think this does, so they have like a vanilla, ambery tone, um, they're similar but this one I just love so much more so I'll talk about this now. This one, Bolu Turquoise by Armani Privé, so it's another one of these, and it comes in a beautiful turquoise bottle. This one is amazing. Oh my gosh, it's got a prominent vanilla note. Salt, it's got incense in it, but it's not like too incense-y. It's got some kind of aromatic notes as well, and I think it also has black pepper. Um, It's got a moss note. It's just... 
Mm, it's just so good. I cannot tell you. And this is not my typical scent profile either. Like, oftentimes I do not like fragrances that are too bold, woody, heavy, spicy, smoky. Like, these two are not my typical scent profile, but I love, love, love them. So, just how I feel. We all have fragrances that we love, I guess. Anyway, this was decanted from scentsplit.com, and this is a very expensive fragrance. The full bottle is like over $300, I think. So, very expensive. But so great. Okay, next... Next, um, this is Ambre Blanc by Maison Ribachi, and it looks like the perfumer is Natalie Feisthauer. Feisthauer. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Um, but yeah, I really love these bottles, the Maison Ribachi bottles, really beautiful. This fragrance I love. This is an ambery fragrance, but it's a very, like it's called a white amber. That's what that means, ombre blanc. And it is like a very, it is a white amber. It's a lighter amber, but it's still got some spiciness to it. It's got some aromatic notes. It has a hedione note, but to me it's not like that floral. Um, I'm forgetting some of the other notes, but this one's just like total unisex to me. I, I feel like it's very unisex. A little bit spicy, a little aromatic, light, ambery. I just really like it. Really like it. I've definitely tried some of the other Maison Robache, um fragrances, but this is for sure my favorite that I've found so far. Alright, so Ambre Blanc by Maison Rabache. Okay, next, here's another decant from Scentbird. This is by the brand Arquiste, and it's called Po, or sorry, it's called Poo. That's how you pronounce it, Poo. And Poo means, I think it means skin in French. So this fragrance is, um, it's another ambergris scent, so it's kind of similar-ish to this one, but this one's more like vanilla-y. This one is just very ambergris. That's like the main, um, or maybe also and or ambroxan. I can't remember if it has both or just the ambergris. But anyway, ambroxan is like a, I think it's a synth synthetic, um, like part of ambergris. So, if you smelled Juliet has a gun, not a perfume, which is a molecular fragrance, it does smell kind of like this, but this has some other notes as well. Like, I think it has sage, I think it has like pepper, and some other notes, but I mainly just get the ambergris. Um, so it's very unisex to me, just like a, like a, um, amber, musky amber of the sea. Um, with some other supporting notes. So, yeah. Probably not for everybody. I don't even feel like I want to wear this half the time, but I, I think it's a nice fragrance. Okay, so that's Arquiste po Poo. <laughs> Alright, next. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of this one. This is Chanel Chance Eau Fraiche, The Green Bottle bottle and um this one is so beautiful it's another woody citrusy touch green kind of like um versace versace this one's way more citrusy this one i prefer in fact i might not keep this in my collection for that much longer we'll see but this one is absolutely stunning to me um comes across as a little bit more perfumey whereas this one just this is very citrusy fresh, which is great, but this one is blended so beautifully, in my opinion. I also... Oh, I also love it so much because it has that Chanel patchouli in it, and I just... I love the way that Chanel 
does patchouli. So you definitely get a dose of patchouli. It's woody, um, it's a touch green, and it's got citruses in it. It's marketed to women, but I feel like it's fairly unisex. Um, yeah, so really pretty. Chanel Chance Eau Fraiche. Alright, next, this is a tiny little mini of But It's Praise, otherwise I wouldn't be keeping it. Um, this is a mini of Jo Malone's Orange Bitters. So this fragrance uh, just has a few notes. It has like a few types of um, orange or citrus, like I think it has orange, bitter orange, and like maybe something else. And then it has sandalwood and amber. I feel like that might be all of the notes. It's like citrus, orange, um, sandalwood, and amber. And that's really what you get. It's like a woody, ambery base with citrus. So as it dries down, you get more and more of the base notes, the amber and the sandalwood, and less of the bitter orange. But I wouldn't say it's like a bitter fragrance, but it's not like a sweet, it's not a sweet orange. So yeah, this I feel like is good for all seasons, but honestly, I would wear it more in the winter and they kind of market it in the winter because it's like festive orange, like oranges you think of like Christmas or whatever. And, but it's got those base notes, the sandalwood and amber. Um, so I feel like for me, at least it's appropriate in the winter time. Um, and yeah, I feel like it's very unisex as well. Like, it's, it's not sweet at all, so. Okay, that is Orange Bitters by Jill Malone. And then this is the last bottle I have. It's a mini. A lot of these ones were like minis, but this is by Hermes, and this is from their Hardin line, and this one is called Le Hardin de Monsieur Lee. And this one I love. Um, I wore this a few days ago. I mean, it's not like one of my favorites of all time, but I do really like it. Um, it's, so this has just a few notes. It has citrus. I think it has jasmine. I think it has like pine sap and mint. And what is the citrus? Kumquat. It has kumquat. So that's a fun citrus note. Um, so it's very like naturalistic smelling, very peaceful, serene type fragrance. Like if you get like headaches or you're easily bothered by fragrances, I'm not certain, but I feel like this is the sort of scent that would not bother you and would actually feel more like aromatherapy. Um, but what I love about this is it has all these like fresh invigorating notes like mint, pine sap, kumquat, but it's very soft and kind of musky and like well-rounded. It almost smells like there's like an ambergris note or like a salty note that rounds it out. It doesn't list that, but it almost smells a little bit like the quality you get when you smell Hermes Eau de Marveille, if you smelled that one, because that one has like ambergris, so it's kind of it smells similar. I can't explain it. If you know, you know. Um, so that is super cute. Look at that cap. That is um, by Hermes Le Jardin de Monsieur Lee. So everybody, that is all of the bottles that I have. And next, I wanted to show you some samples that I have. So first one here. This is Le Papier by uh, Diptyque, and I heard about this from the Simple Chic Life, I think is what her channel is called. Um, I think her name is Olithia, and um, she mentioned this one, and she said it was just very musky, kind of unisex. It has a sesame note, but it's mostly very musky. Oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah, it's mostly a musk. It almost has like a bit of an aquatic touch, but um, 
it just almost smells a little wet to me, but it doesn't smell like floral or fruity. It, it does kind of almost smell like wet paper. I don't know how else to say it. Like the best wet paper you can imagine. Um, because I think that papier means paper water. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's got a sesame note. Total unisex. I think people have said this smells kind of similar to Le Labo, another 13, but I don't know. I haven't smelled that one in a couple of months, so I can't really tell you. Like, I can't give you a side-by-side -side comparison. But anyway, I really love this. I'm actually on the lookout for a full bottle of this one because I like it enough to consider a bottle. So that is Diptyque's Le Papier. Okay, next... Here is um, Floral Street's Arizona Bloom. So this fragrance, gosh, I um, can't smell it, but I know, I know that this one is kind of like, it's interesting. I think it's kind of like a musky, lightly coconut, lightly fig, um, kind of like atmospheric type scent. I think it might have some like woody notes or vetiver or something. But yeah, this one's really interesting, total unisex, um, and yeah, just kind of fun. So that's Arizona Bloom. I think it also has some like floral notes to it as well, but just very well-rounded. Um, here is um, BDK Gris Charnel. I feel like this is their best seller, Gris Charnel, and actually this one is the Extra de Parfum. So it's like the super strong one. I don't even know where I got the sample, but I just got it in a bundle of other samples on Mercari. So this one is so strong. I sprayed this on a dress, laundered the dress, and weeks later when I put it on again, like months later probably, I still freaking smell this. That's how strong this is. So what I mainly get from this is um, sandalwood first and foremost and I know there's also a fig note which you do get a touch of and I think there's a cardamom note so I think those are kind of the three main ones that I get sandalwood, fig, and cardamom really beautiful, super smooth, very sexy very unisex yeah, just beautiful so that is Grace Charnel Extra de Parfum by BDK so the, um, just the Eau de Parfum I know it's very pretty similar, but just less strong, and I think has slightly different notes as well. Okay, and then let's see. Here is um, this is by Maison Francis Curdijon, and this is La Homme à la Rose. Um, so I have a sample of the. Um, I think it's like, oh God, La Femme à la Rose. Shoot, I don't know but it's like the feminine version but the masculine version here it's like a more masculine rose but it's still to me it's very unisex because you get quite a bit of rose which to me is more feminine but men should totally wear rose because it's so beautiful i would love it if um, my fiance wore rose like this i would be so into it so it's just a slightly more like aromatic woody rose but still very soft floral beautiful so I feel like this is very unisex even though it is marketed to men okay so that is La Homme à la Rose by Maison Francis Cardichon um next this one is by Colleen Reserve this is Rain I'm actually selling this mini spray but um so I don't love, love it enough to keep it but it's very it's very patchouli, slightly aquatic, kind of petrichor, like that smell of rain hitting the earth. And it almost smells like earthy, almost a little dirty. So yeah, it, I mean, rain is a good name. I feel like they did a good job with the scent to some degree, but yeah, very unisex. So that is clean reserve rain. Um, okay, here's one. This is newer to my sample collection, but I'm keeping it 
um, in my sample collection because I love it. it this is Iris Mullican by Misson Crivelli. So this is another one that's very strong. A couple sprays is all you need. This is um, iris, a bunch of iris. So it's like a woody, powdery iris. Um, and then this has got vanilla. It's got quite a hefty dose of vanilla, which is really nice and sexy. It's got, I think, some other woody notes maybe. And it's got a note of leather, which... I don't tend to love leather in fragrances, but I actually really do like it in this one. So overall, I like this fragrance. I think, I think in my ideal world, I would like, I would like put some of this into a, like a decant bottle and fill it up with, um, Glossier U, which Glossier U is an iris scent the musky iris scent. So I feel like if I mixed those two together, then I feel like I could like wear this and it wouldn't be like too intense, but it's pretty dang strong. So I feel like I might want to water it down a little bit. But yeah, that is Iris Melly Comb. <coughs> By Maison Cravelli. Okay, and then we just have a few more left. This is CK2 by Calvin Klein. This is marketed for both men and women. I really like Calvin Klein because I feel like a lot of their scents are kind of like supposed to be unisex, like CK1, CK everyone. Um, but CK2, this one, uh, I can't smell it, but it's super unique. It's kind of got like a watery, airy vibe. It's got a note of pebbles, so it's got a mineral touch as well. It's got some floral notes, but it's not uber floral. It's got a wasabi note, so it's got a touch of like spicy fresh green. The wasabi note is part of why I can't quite wear it. It's just a little bit not, not working for me, but it's really interesting. Totally unisex. Um, very fresh, like makes me think of like going on a mountain hike and getting at the top where there's like a waterfall hitting the ground and the water's hitting pebbles and that's aerating in your direction and you smell like green and like f some florals and rocks and mountain air like that's what this kind of seems like to me okay so that is ck2 and then here is one by miss uh Miller Harris, sorry. Miller Harris, and this one is called La Cedre, so cedar. This one, um, I know this is a cedar scent, and gosh, I know there's some other notes in here as well, but I'm kind of forgetting. But I did really like this as a cedar scent. I'm kind of keeping my eyes out for a cedar dominant scent that I really like, because I don't know that I've found one yet that I'm like set to buy a bottle of. So, if you have any ideas, you can let me know. So that is La Cedre by Miller Harris. And then this is Jo Malone Myrrh and Tonka. Um, so this is a very like ambery resinous um, scent. So it's got myrrh, which is a resin. Uh, shoot, I don't know if it's from a tree or what, but it's a resin. So it's kind of like spicy, ambery incense um, And then this also has tonka bean, which tonka is a kind of vanilla, nutty, leathery um, type scent profile. I think it has some other notes in here as well, like lavender, but I can't remember. But basically, yeah, you kind of get like an incense or resinous -y, vanillic um, profile, I would say pretty unisex because it's not like that sweet. It's not gourmand at all, but it's just kind of like sexy, ambery, a little spicy, heavier for sure. So that is Jo Malone, Myrrh, and Tonka. Okay, and then lastly, and I completely forget what this one smells like, so I'm gonna actually give it a spray. Or it's more like, I think I might know what it smells like, but it's been a while since I've... Or it's like, I don't remember which name is which. So anyway, this is by the brand 
um, by Rosie Jane, and this one's called Dylan, and what does it smell like? Let's find out. Oh, yeah. So this one, actually, I feel like I just answered my own question, because I was saying that, like, I'm interested to find a cedar-dominant scent that I might want to buy a bottle of. It might be this one, Dylan. This is a cedar and musk scent, I think. That's mostly what I'm getting. It's like a musky cedar. I think it's really nice, sexy, woody, musky, totally unisex. So yeah, I'll keep this one out and I'll like wear it a few more times and if I like it enough, I might consider buying a bottle of it. So yeah, everybody, that is, um, those are my unisex fragrances. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, and yeah, I will catch you all again soon. Okay, bye.